Back in 2006, I had left a corporate job. I was in advertising. And uh, we moved out to California, which meant we had no money because we were now on one income. So I decided, all right, either I have to figure out how to make money at home or I have to go back to work because it just wasn't happening. And at the same time, we were kind of needing a lot of storage options for our kids because they were getting bigger and there were toys everywhere. So I went online and I started looking and I thought, there's no way I can afford what I want. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And I looked in the modern section of toy boxes because we really like modern aesthetic. And there was one that was it. And the light bulb kind of went off and I thought, all right, this is crazy, but if I can teach myself how to build these things, they look pretty simple maybe there's a market there because I, I don't know where all these people are putting their toys if they like modern furniture. So I bought a table saw and just started to tinker and the first ones were horrible. Um, I didn't know what I was doing. I had to do a lot of research online to figure out how to build. And uh, once I did that and started getting comfortable, I built some things for my kids and then I just started slowly you know, thinking, how am I gonna do this? And it led to launching Mod Mom Furniture Online. I grew up in a household where my dad used to build a lot of our furniture. He was a football coach, we didn't have a lot of money, uh, my mom was a teacher, so he would take old bleacher boards and actually build like a coffee table out of them. So while I wasn't interested in the least because I was sort of your typical girl that didn't want to have anything to do with woodworking uh, when I was a teenager, I was around it and I wasn't scared of it. So when, you know, cut to 2006 when I'm trying to figure out, okay, how do I do this for real myself? Um, I wasn't as scared, so I just went online and started looking at, okay, how do you set up a table saw? How do you make uh, a type of a cut that I need to make? And then I went to a couple uh, hardware stores and started looking at how do I join these things? You know, how does the wood actually join this way? Um, so it was just a lot of trial and error and a lot of research. So when I was building uh, in the garage, did it for about four years, my day consisted of you know, getting the kids ready for school and then going into the garage, no matter what the heat was, it could have been 112, it could have been freezing, and I would just build and build and build all day. And I would also handle the marketing and the invoicing and basically just everything that's involved with running a small business. And it got to uh, the point where I was burning out, first of all, but the orders were coming in so fast that I knew I, something has to give. I have got to figure out how to get some help. And that led me to reaching out to people on LinkedIn, people I didn't know. And I had done this before and kind of gotten shot down, um, but this particular time I reached out to a woman and I thought, I'm just gonna give it a shot. And she was amazing. She was the one who helped me figure out, okay, I should probably go with the Amish versus going with China. I want to keep it US made, I want to keep it eco-friendly, that type of thing. So for me, it was a lot about connections, it was a lot about not being scared to reach out and ask for help. I think as an entrepreneur, a lot of times you think, okay, well, I can do everything. I can manage all of this, and if I could just keep the ball rolling. But at some point, you just, you can't. You have to get help in order to scale the business. So the wood that I use for all of the furniture right now is called Baltic Birch and it's a really strong, eco-friendly plywood. Um, and it's great for kids, it's good for really any type of furniture. So that's what I've been using. And the design uh, inspirations typically come from things that I like. I like modern, but I also like organic. So I tried to fit both of them together. So you'll see a lot of things like trees and leaves and, and things that honestly, when I was building them myself, I can't cut a perfect circle. So I would have to cut, I thought, okay, I can't do a circle lid, I need to do a leaf lid because then I can cut with a jigsaw the leaf and it's not gonna look, you know, like it's not perfect. So I, um, I really had to think of those types of things when I was designing. I have a few favorites. One of, uh, one of my favorites is called the Owen Toy Box and it looks like a tree with two leaves on top and the lids are lift off, so it's kind of like a puzzle piece. So it encourages kids to put their toys away, we like to think, um, and that way, you know, it's a little bit more fun than just lifting up something. It's like a puzzle, I can put it back down again. I have a couple other pieces that are more mid-century style that I really like. One is called the Gracie Toy Box After My Daughter, and it's very Eames Herman Miller-esque. Uh, it was designed after my grandmother's old record player. Do you remember they have, used to have the split lids? So I just thought, wait a minute, we need to do something with that because that's a really cool look and we can just turn it into a toy box. They are made in the US, they are eco-friendly, they come completely assembled except for legs. So you're getting the craftsmanship, the mortise and tenon joints, um, things that you, know, you normally wouldn't get if you were to buy them and have to assemble them yourself. 
One of my goals in, in doing all of this is I wanted to make furniture that was heirloom, that would last for generation after generation. So by creating them and building them with the joinery and the old fashioned woodworking techniques, the piece that you buy is something that you can keep forever and then you can pass it on from generation to generation.